on page 8 of chapter 2, learning objective. And by the way, where do you find learning objective? Log on to Canvas. Once you get into the Canvas there, and click on modules. Modules is one of the items on the, on the left side of the, uh, of the screen there. Click on modules there. There are three sections, uh, sections on uh, under modules there. The first one is the learning objective for each of the chapter there. Okay. So for those of you who haven't got a chance to log on to Canvas yet, um, this is uh, really uh, a time that you need to, uh, uh, you need offer files there. You need to log on to Canvas there. Make sure you know where those equipment, uh, those uh, documents are. Okay. So for the uh, chapter eight, uh, for chapter two, page eight, and there is a table on there. I need you to know the name, the charges, and the formula for those polytonic items there. And you need this information for the first in-class exam, which is this coming Thursday. Okay. So uh, that's our first uh, three learning objectives in the uh, uh, in chapter two. The next two learning objectives are somewhat related to one another, so we put them together. In these two learning objectives there, we want you to be able to, given a periodic table, okay, we want you to be able to use atomic mass, the information given in the periodic table there, uh, for each element there. And we need you to be able to calculate what we call the molar mass of a particular compound, if you know the formula. So that's one of the uh, objectives there. And also, given the mass of an element, element or a compound, we need you to be able to convert the mass into moles. Moles, if you remember the seventh uh, international standard unit for the quantity of the chemicals that we measure, it's measured in moles. Okay? And we can still record the mass in grams, kilograms, and milligrams, or whatever, but the standard uh, international standard unit for measuring the quantity of, uh, for measuring the quantity of the chemical is in moles there. So we will introduce the concept of moles. Uh, what is a mole? And how do we calculate, say, given the periodic table there, how do we calculate uh, the number of moles of that compound? And also, based on the number of moles, there's a relationship between the mole, number of moles and the number of particles in there. And how do we calculate the number of molecules, number of atoms in the given compound there? So these two topics, uh, we are trying to quantify after giving you the periodic table, after giving you uh, all that information in there, we're trying to use that information to quantify the amount of chemicals that we're working with. And uh, chemistry is a quantitative science, so quantification is really, really important. And this is the beginning of the introduction to the calculations involved for the course there. You need to pay extra, extra attention on how we do these conversions there. Now, there's nothing new in terms of calculation. There's nothing new here. Dimensional analysis. Now, when we did <coughs> dimensional analysis in chapter one, we give you a list of seven or eight different questions there. And we showed you all you need to do is to identify the correct conversion factor. And then you always multiply for any quantity that you're doing in conversion, you always multiply the conversion factor. Focus on the unit. You're trying to cancel out the unit that you don't want so that you end up with the unit you do want. That's how you sol solve dimensional analysis problems there. So there's nothing new in this in, on, the, on the calculation in this part. It's just another type of dimensional analysis. We will give you a, a periodic table, and the, everything in the periodic table, that's a giant table of conversion factors there. We'll give you a lot of conversion factors so you can do the calculations there. Okay. So talking about the periodic table, and again, all of these information, all the numbers there, while we have that information, uh, whenever you take an exam there, we'll, we will give you the periodic table. And when you do homework assignments there, you have the periodic, we have access to the periodic table there. So all the information is in here. Uh, these numbers there, uh, these numbers here, those are the conversion factors that we need to identify. Once we can correctly identify the conversion factors, the calculation is easy. Punch in the numbers in the calculator. As long as you set up the equation correctly, you will get the correct answer there. Now, if you look at iron, number 26, atomic number number 26, uh, the uh, mass, uh, atomic mass number 55.847. Okay, now that's iron number 26, 55.847. Okay, number 26 means in the atom of iron, you have 26 protons, you have 27, uh, 26 electrons. Okay, and then 55. 55.847, that's the atomic m mass, I should also wait there. Okay. Something is missing in the periodic table. What's missing there? When we talk about the mass, 55.847. Unit. Unit is not in the periodic table. Well, units are missing. You 
ask the question, I thought you said unit is very important. You have to include the unit whenever you do your measurement. How come in this most important document in the chemistry, when we list numbers there, there's no unit associated with it? Well, the reason for that is because the number we have in the periodic table represent two different things. So if you put the units for two different quantities in the periodic table, it's already quite busy, that table there. You see the symbol of the atomic uh, atoms there you, you, uh, for each element. And you see the atomic number, you see the mass number there. If you put the units in there, uh, the entire periodic table would be overcrowded. And uh, therefore, um, as a, uh, by convention, as a uh, uh, pretty much like a public knowledge there, when you are given a periodic table, everybody who has a little bit of chemistry, uh, background in chemistry there, it, it would know the number in the periodic table, the mass number, represents two different units there. One is the atomic mass, atomic mass unit there. For each atom, the mass for each atom, we're talking about the relative mass for each of the atoms there. The other unit is represented if you have a mole of those atoms there, how many, what's the equivalency in grams in terms of mass for those atoms there. So these are the two quantities represented by that 55.847 number, and that number represents two different units in there. Okay. So the atomic mass unit, we mentioned this uh, in chapter one and chapter two um, uh, prior to this particular class there. Atomic mass unit, or AMU, some textbooks um, simply use an italicized U to represent AMU, and uh, I think in your textbook we're using AMU, the atomic mass unit there, to represent the uh, relative mass there. Now we know atomic mass unit is a relative measure of the mass. Now, when you have a relative measurement, you got to have a standard. What is the standard? Well, the standard uh, des uh, decided by the uh, 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 by the uh, IUPAC and I can International Union for Pure and Applied Chem Applied Chemistry there. And the standard chosen by IUPAC is carbon twelve. Now we know we have carbon thirteen, we have carbon fourteen, and then carbon twelve. So we choose carbon twelve as our standard. And we assume exactly 12 units to an atom of carbon-12. So carbon-12 is 12. Everything else is compared to it. When you compare iron to carbon-12, iron would be 55.847. When you compare hydrogen to carbon-12, hydrogen would be 1. When you compare oxygen to carbon-12, oxygen would be 16. Okay. So carbon-12 is exactly 12 atomic mass units there. And the masses of all the other uh, elements are obtained by comparison to carbon-12. Okay, so that's a relative mass there. And we also indicated in the, uh, uh, at the beginning of the uh, uh, of chapter two there, one atomic mass unit, or one U, or one AMU, if you will, equals to 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. Now, this is not something that I need you to memorize. And then this is not something that you have to uh, use unless you are being asked to do the conversion between the atomic mass unit and the gram. Now, in that case, it will give you this conversion factor. You don't have to memorize it. Okay. So now that we know what AMU stands for and what is the standard that we use to determine the AMU for each of the element, atoms of each element there, then in this case, we can ask you if you know how many number of each atoms are involved in a particular compound, given the formula, you can determine the relative mass not only for one particular atom, you can also determine the relative mass for the entire compound. So the question here is that what is the mass of 